Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Uh, I would like to present um, another series of problems. Um, these are um, the problems which I include into the chapter uh, dedicated to theory of probabilities, uh, which is a part of uh, advanced mathematics course for teenagers presented on Unizor.com. Um, I do suggest you, as usually, to number one, watch it from uh, the website unizor.com, not just from the YouTube, because the website contains comments. And number two, before you actually watch the lecture, look at the comments, look at the notes, and they contain all the problems which I'm going to present to you. And uh, I strongly encourage you to try to solve them just, just by yourself. That's a good exercise. And then, obviously, listen to the lecture. All right. Let's start. Well, the first thing which I would like to remind you is that um, these and many other problems in theory of probabilities are um, very easy represented uh, in a graphical form. Um, basically, probability is a measure. And as a measure, it's completely analogous to the concept of area, for instance, on the plane. So, if you have something like a piece of the land, and then a smaller patch inside, you can compare what is the area of this corresponding to the area of an entire uh, piece of land. And the ratio, which is obviously from 0 to 1 um, is completely analogous to the probability problems. So, if you um, randomly drop the point inside this entire area, the probability of having this point inside this area is obviously proportional to uh, the area of this, of this little patch. So, that's why basically we have this analogy. Now, let's just continue with this analogy. If this area represents, well, consider the area of an entire uh, page, an entire um, uh, piece of land is equal to 1 in whatever units, doesn't really matter. Then I can say that the, that, that the area of this particular page is actually a, a concept completely equivalent to the probability. Now, so what's the probability of um, uh, an opposite event? So if this page represents the event, then everything outside of this page represents a, an event which is not exactly this one, right? So if this represents, okay, something happens, then everything outside represents this did not happen. And the probability of this of happening plus probability of this not happening obviously equals to 1. Now, also, if you have two areas, for instance, this one, which is, let's say, A, and this one, which is B. So these represent two different events. So again, if the entire um, uh, area of an entire piece of land has an area of 1, then the area of this is the probability of the point uh, falling into this area. And the probability of this is uh, basically the area of this is a probability of the point randomly thrown onto this land piece uh, to fall within the boundaries of A. Now, then I can just use a theory of um, sets, the set theory, to represent another event. What, for instance, um, representation of event when both A and B are happening? Well, obviously, it's an intersection between them, this little piece, right? Now, what's the probability of A or B? Well, that's the union of these. So, intersection is analogous to end. Uh, union is analogous to or. And, uh, and the opposite, the not event, I was already saying, that's outside of the event. 
So I will use this to basically demonstrate the solutions to the problems which I was talking about. Now, another thing which is also very um, graphically uh, useful to take a look at is conditional probability. If I would like to know what's the conditional probability of event, let's say, B, uh, on the condition that A has happened. Now, what does it mean? It means that I already know that whenever I threw the point randomly uh, onto this uh, particular piece of land, I know beforehand that it's already inside the boundaries of A. So what's the probability of B happening under this condition? Well, obviously, it's a ratio of this piece relative to the ratio of A. Completely equivalent to the probability of A in the first place. It's the ratio of area of A divided by ratio of an entire piece of land. Well, if it's equal to 1, then it's just an area. But in any case, it's a, it's a ratio, right? So, in this case, the conditional probability is basically the probability of A and B. And I'm using the uh, set theory intersection um, divided by probability of A. So, it's ratio of this area divided by, by this. So, this is a graphical representation of probabilities which I'm going to use. So, that's basically my preamble, preamble to all these problems. All right, now let's go to the problems. Now, let's considering the following fact. I know that from um, event Y, if it happens, follows that event X is also happening. Now, first of all, before I'm asking questions, how to represent it graphically? Well, here it is. Now, if this is, again, our piece of land, and this is our X, now, what I'm saying right now, that if the point falls into the Y, it automatically means it, it, it falls inside the X. What it means? It means that the Y should be somewhere here, inside the X, right? Only in this case, from occurrence of event Y, I have automatic occurrence of event X. So that's the graphical representation of following, from Y follows X. If from Y follows X, Y should be graphically inside. All right, now, here are the questions. True or false? Not Y. X. Is it true or false? Well, let's just think about it. What is not Y? Not Y is everything which is outside of Y, graphically, right? Now, I know that the point actually falls inside of this not Y, which means everywhere outside of Y. Does it automatically mean that the X actually happens, that the, that the point is inside X? No, not at all, because let's take this point, for instance. This point is outside of Y, so it belongs to this, but does it belong to X? No. So, from this, it's not following. I should have put this following sign. So, this is false. Next one. Um, from Y follows not X. Is this right? Well, let's just think about it. What is not X? Not X is everything outside X, right? It's this area. So, I know that my point falls into this area. Does it mean that it automatically falls into this area outside of X? Well, actually, absolutely not. It's just an opposite. We definitely know that it's not falling. It's not falling inside of this. So, this is also false. Next. Not Y follows not x. Is this true? Let's just think about it. 
Not y means that the point actually is outside of the y area, here. Not x means it's outside of x, which is this area. But let's consider this point, which is in x but not in y. Well, since it's not in y, it's, uh, it, it, it's actually corresponding to this particular condition. Not y happens. So the point is in the not y. Does it mean that it's automatically in the not x? Not x is outside of this and the point is inside x. So that's not true. So that's also not true. That's false. Next. Um, from x follows y. Okay, is this a true statement? So if my point falls inside the x, does it mean that it automatically falls inside y? Obviously not, because the point can be, again, in this position. It falls inside x, but it does not fall inside y. So x happens, and y does not happen. So this is not the correct implication. False. Next. Uh, not x y so again if I randomly uh, drop the point inside this square I know that not x happened which means the point is somewhere here outside of x does it mean that it's inside y absolutely not it's just an opposite it's not so this is false too Next, from x follows not y. Is this true? So x happens, which means I'm inside this area. Question is, does it automatically mean that I am, uh, that not y happens? Well, not y is here, outside of y. All I know is that the point is inside x. But now, if the point is here, it's inside x, but it's inside y, not outside of y. So again, this is not true. And the last but not least, not x follows not y. Is this true? from not x. Okay, not x means everything outside this bigger area, right? This one. Now, so I know that I am inside of this area. This is not x. Now, my question is, does it mean that I'm automatically outside of the y, not y, which means I'm in this area? Yes, absolutely, because every point which is inside not x is also inside the bigger area. So not y is bigger uh, than not x, which means uh, whatever, I I if I know that not x happens, then not y definitely happens automatically. So this is actually true. And that's the only a true condition which, which is related to this one. If, if this is given, then this is also true. If this is true, this is true. All others are false. So that's my first problem. And as you see, my graphical representation is very useful in these cases. Basically, the whole language of theory of probabilities I have transferred to um, the language of the set theory, like included, uh, union, uh, intersection, excluded, and stuff like this. The problem number two. I know that both are true.
So I have events x, y, and z, and I know that if y happens, x happens. If z happens, x happens. So x follows bo from both, from y and from z. Again, before I'm uh, uh, presenting the problem, let me graphically um, explain how it, how it works. Again, I have this big piece of land. I have somewhere x. And since this x actually follows from y and follows from z, both y and z are supposed to be inside. Then I know that if my point randomly dropped onto this square, if it falls inside y, it also falls inside x, which means if y happens, x happens. If it falls inside z, it also fall, uh, falls inside x. So again, from z I, I, I have an I implication to x. x follows from z. So that's my condition. Now the questions, again, similarly. Now the first, y and z from this follows x. Is x following from y and z? Well, let's just think about what is y and z. y and z means that both events happened. So my point falls inside y and inside z. It means it's inside this intersection between these two So if this is true, if the point falls inside the intersection, does it mean it's, in, it's inside x, which means x happens? Yes, absolutely. So this is true. Next is or z. Is this true? Well, what is or? Graphically, or is represented as a union. So I know that y or z happened. It means my point randomly dropped on this uh, square falls inside y or inside z, which means it's inside the union of these two. Or is equivalent of the union. And is equivalent of intersection or is equivalent of the union. Right? Now, if my point is inside this union, now I know that y is inside and z is inside x, both. Well, union is obviously as well inside, which means that if my point is within the boundaries of this union of y and z, it's also inside x, which means x happens, and this is also a true condition. Next. Oh, this is complicated. Not x or not z. And my question is whether not y follows from this. Not x or not z. Okay, let's just think about it. What is not x? Not x is everything outside x, which means this area. Not z is outside of z, which means this area. And I am connecting them with OR, which means all the points with this type of uh, shading and this type, they are OR, which means we are unionizing them all together. But now let's just think about it. Not Z is definitely bigger than not X, right? Because Z is inside, so whatever is outside of Z would be definitely including in itself whatever is outside of X. So, so basically the union of these is exactly the same as not Z. And now my question is whether from not z follows not y. Well, not z is everything outside of z, 
not y is everything outside of y. Now, um, whether from one follows another, where, well, obviously no, because if the point is somewhere here, which is outside of z, which means it belongs to not z, Uh, it's inside y, so it definitely inside means it's not it's not outside, right? So not z, not y would not be true. So this is an example of a point, which um, which is inside of this area, but not inside that area. Which means from this, I cannot say that this one follows. So this is false. This is false. Next. I think I have to redraw it because I have too much drawn already on it. So this is my x, this is my y, and this is my z. All right, next. Not x or z. Not x or z. And I'm asking if not y follows from it. X or z? X or z? Well, since z is inside x, x or z, which means all the points which belong to x or z, are actually exactly the same as, as x. So this is actually the same as x. So not x, not x, and this is not y. Not x means here. Not y is outside of y. Now, as you see, everything outside of y is bigger than everything which is outside of x. Outside of x is only this area. Outside of y is this area. So, if I know that the point is here, which means outside of here, it's definitely inside of not y. So, this actually does follow. This is false. Again, I have to re redraw this. X, Y, Okay, next. Not x, not y and z. Okay. Let me just wipe up this as well. Not x. not y and z y and z all right let's just think about it y and z is intersection not y and z is a rather big area everything in ev everything outside of this shaded intersection now not x is everything outside of x Definitely smaller than everything outside of this, because outside of this includes everything here, right? So, this is smaller, this is part of this, and since this is part of this, if point, point, if points falls into this area, it definitely falls into this area. So, from this condition, this does follow. And not x. not y or z well this is also kind of the same thing because y or z is this union right now everything outside of this union which is this is bigger than everything outside of x which is just this so again if my point 
falls into this area, which is outside of X, it definitely falls into this area, which is outside of this area, which is much bigger. So this is also true. That's the second problem. Next. X and Y are mutually exclusive. Okay, again, first of all, let's just present it in a graphical format. This is X. Mutually exclusive, it means there are no common elements, no common elementary events. So in this case, that's the way how it's presented. There are no common elements. Intersection is empty, so to speak. Okay? So that's what mutual exclusivity is. Now, question is, are they independent? Now, back to my definition of conditional probability, you remember? Conditional probability actually was B conditioning of A is equal to and B divided by probability of A. Now, what is independence? Independence between them means that this is exactly the same as probability of B. If B is independent of A, then the probability of B occurring if A occurs should be the same as the probability of B occurring by itself. That's what independence actually, by definition, is. So all we have to do right now, we have to check if this is true. Well, in this case, it's not X, uh, A and B, it's X and Y. So let's just check this particular um, identity, if it's true. So the probability of X intersection Y should be equal to probability of X times probability of Y, right? I just multiply both things by probability of A. So that's what we have to check if we want to, 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 to talk about independence. That's what independence means. Independence of simultaneous occurrence of two events is exactly the same as the product of their probabilities. Okay? All right, so let's just see, uh, let's just think about it. Now, obviously, probability of X and probability of Y, which in this particular geometrical model are just areas of these two. If the area of entire square is equal to one, then these are areas which are really probabilities. Now, what's the probability of their intersection? Zero, right? There is no intersection, so the probability is zero. There are no elementary events common. So this is non-zero and this is zero, so definitely there is no independence. It's not independent. If they are mutually exclusive events, they are not independent. Because if something happens, then we definitely know that it affects the results of this. We cannot say that if they are mutually exclusive, then the chances of this completely independent outcomes are completely independent of the, uh, of the out outcome of this. Because as soon as this is happening, we already cut out certain number of elementary events which have happened, and they could not happen for this guy, since they are mutually exclusive. And that's what makes the whole, in, 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 that, that's what fails the independence test. Next. How about X and not Y? Okay, X and not Y, probability of X and not Y. Again, it should be equal to the product of their, uh, of their probabilities. Is this true? No, it's not, because again, this is definitely not equal to zero. Probability of x is area of this. Probability of y is area which is outside of y, which is also not zero. And x and not y 
uh, are x and not y, this is equal to, let's just think about what's the intersection between x and not y. Now this is x, not y is everything outside of y, so their intersection is everything which is x actually, so this is p of x. So if this, can this be equal to this? No, only if this is equal to 1 and y is definitely, I mean in certain cases yes that's true, if y is an entire uh, sample space, but we're talking about general case. In general, since uh, since uh, probability of not y is not equal to one, that 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 identity is not true. So this is also not true, as well as this one. Next, not x and not y. Okay, let's do it again not x and not y probability of not x and not y now if they are independent it should be equal to the probability of not x multiplied by the by the probability of not y is it true or not let's just think about it now not x is outside of x, right? Not y is outside of y. So, in, if I'm talking about end condition, that's actually the area outside both of them, right? So, it's whatever is right now shaded, that's, that's the area which is this. Now, this is not x, it's a probability of area outside of x, and this is the probability of area outside of y. Now, both of them are, uh, are bigger than this one, so um, it's not really obvious whether um, whether the product of their probabilities is equal to this one. I think um, to approach this problem it's probably better to, to use some concrete example. Now what can be a concrete example? Let me just think about it. Um, what if let's say my area Now, what if my area is, this is x, and the area is 1 8, for instance. And this is y, and the area is 1 quarter. Just let me try to use this as an example. Now, what is not x and not y? That's basically this area, which is what? Uh, 1 minus 1 quarter and 1 minus and minus 1 8, which is what? It's 8 minus 4 is 4 minus 1, 3, 3 eighths. Okay. Now, what's the probability of not x? Well, is x, if x is 1, one eighth, then not x is seven eighths. What is the probability of not y? Y is one quarter, so not y is three quarters. Well, is this product of these is it equal to, 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 to three eighths? Well, obviously no. I mean, in this case, you see, it's three eighths times times seven four. So this is just an example um, of uh, of the of the case when they are not equal. So if I found just one example it means that this is not really a true implication. So this does not follow from this in general case. Okay, so that was my third problem and let me go to the number four.
Number four is about standard deck of cards. So we have 52 cards. Uh, we have ranks from, one, from 2 to 10. Uh, jack, Queen, King and Ace. And we have uh, four different suits. We have spades, we have hearts, we have diamonds, and we have clubs. Now my experiment is pulling one card out of this, uh, of this deck of 52 cards. So I am talking about certain number of events. Event number one, queen is pulled. Event number two, spades pulled. Number three, spades or hearts are pulled. And number four, queen of spades is pulled. Now I have questions. Whether event E1, is it independent from E2 or E3 or E4? Let's just think about it. Okay, let's just do the uh, the arithmetic. The same thing as in the previous case. What's the probability of E1 by itself? Well, there are four different queens in the deck of cards, so we have the probability equals to 452, which is 1 thirteenth. Probability of E2 equals to spades. Now, how many spades I have. I have four different uh, suits, so I have 13 of each, so the probability is 1352, which is one quarter. Probability of event E3, spades or hearts. So it's 13 spades, 13 hearts, so it's 26, 26 50 second, which is one half. And finally, what's the probability of having a queen of spades? Well, that's only one in an entire deck, so the probability is 1 52nd. Okay, now let's talk about combination of these events, E1 and E2. So what's the probability of picking a queen and at the same time of spades? Well, obviously this is E1 and E2 equals to 1 52nd, right? The queen of spades is only one card. Now, let me compare it with the, with the product of their probabilities. 1 13th and 1 4th, which is actually, product would be 1 52nd. So this is E1 and E2 are independent. Now let's talk about E1 and E3. Probability of E1 and E3. So how many cases when both are happening? Spades or hearts and it's a queen. So there are only two cards, queen of spades and queen of hearts. There are no others, so the probability is equal to 252nd. Now, if I will multiply probability of E1 and probability of E3, it's 113 times 1 half. It's 126. Now, 252nd is 126, actually. Right? So, that corresponds as well. So, the product of probabilities is equal to the probability of their intersection. So this is also independent. Okay, now about, how about E4 and E1? So this is says, this says 
queen is pulled and this says queen of spades is pulled the probability is actually 152nd so I know it's queen and they know it's a queen of spades so there is only one card out of 52 right so it's 152nd but if you will compare the probabilities the p of e4 is 152nd already and p of e1 is 113 so if you uh, multiply them uh, together obviously it would be some, some, some very small number 1 over 13 times 52 definitely not equal to so this is not independent e1 and e4 and for a good reason because in the uh, condition of this problem queen is in both cases you see here we are talking about different uh, characteristics of the cards one is a rank another is a suit and this is also rank and suit but this is rank and this is a mixture of rank and suit and that's why that's what disturbs the independence it's no longer independent so that was my fourth problem thanks very much I do suggest you to go again through these pro pr problems on the unizor.com and uh, try again to solve just by yourself and then if you if you can if you can cannot just go to back to the um, the lecture um, that would be it for today thanks a lot and good luck <laughs>